I'm going to go ahead and start the webinar to respect our time and respect everybody's time, but welcome everybody. My name is Daniel Martinez. I am the program coordinator for high school scholarship here at the Institute for Educational Advancement. Um, that's a mouthful, but today we're here to talk about the Caroline D. Bradley Scholarship um, for this 2024 through 2025 application period. And so, so here at IEA, we don't just have the Caroline D. Bradley Scholarship. Uh, we have a plethora of other uh, programs, including UNASA, which is uh, our summer camp that's focused on supporting the whole gifted child. And so we actually have two campuses this year, which is East and West. Um, East will be in Michigan and West will be in Denver. Um, and that's a great experience for gifted students to go ahead and travel and um, have a summer camp experience. And then our next uh, program is Academy, which is held right here in Pasadena and uh, some online classes as well. And these are courses that are held in small group settings and they're taught by subject matter experts and they encourage in-depth explorations of topics outside of school curriculum. So this includes like stem cell research or microbiology or things like that, that usually kids don't have a chance to take in um, <clears throat> in school. And finally, we have our completely free um, gifted resource center that is uh, curated by IEA staff and IEA contributors. Um, and it's an online database for resources that are appropriate um, for gifted learners and their parents, gifted educators, um, any anybody that works with gifted children. Um, and this is going to be from preschool all the way up until um, high school that we have these resources for, for everybody to access uh, completely free. And that is all on our website. That's educationaladvancement.org. Okay. So now the, the main uh, juice of this webinar is, again, the class of 2029 Carolyn D. Bradley Scholarship. So we call it the class of 2029 because that is the year that they will be graduating high school. So again, um, we ask that applicants be currently in seventh grade or that they plan to start high school in the fall of 2025. So four years from the fall of 2025 would be 2029. Um, and some of our other uh, application requirements are, again, to demonstrate exceptional academic ability and achievement, whether that be through standardized tests, whether that be through um, <clears throat> demonstrating that they're gifted, uh, if they've been identified as twice exceptional, any of those uh, do count for that. And then we also ask that they strive for excellence and they continually seek more rigorous academic challenges. So again, this isn't about just uh, a student getting a good grade to get a good grade. It's for them to really explore the material and to really be passionate about learning and passionate about growing their skills um, and growing themselves academically and personally. Uh, another thing is that they demonstrate leadership abilities. Now, leadership can look different. It doesn't just have to be, you know, being the president of the debate club or being um, president of the eighth grade class or the seventh grade class, I'm sorry. Um, it would be anything from that or uh, being a leader in class discussion or contributing to class discussion in meaningful ways. And that comes through um, in other parts of the application, which we'll talk about. Uh, another thing is that they exhibit creative thinking, uh, that they're extremely curious and has a thirst for knowledge, which goes back to uh, not just getting a grade to get a good grade, but getting uh, to know the material and getting to really have that passion for learning. Um, and again, that goes hand in hand with being highly motivated. Um, they also should embrace the merits of integrity and honesty, which again, this is a, your classic citizenship uh, kind of award at school and things like that. So if that sounds like your student, we do encourage them to apply uh, again, class of 2029. So current seventh graders that plan to start high school in the fall of 2025. Um, the last thing that we do wanna make sure is that we do uh, have they do have to be U.S. citizens. They're going to attend a high school program that is based in the U.S. Okay, so how to apply. Uh, the application, this is the link. Uh, if you click it, that should work. Um, there's These applications this year are due April 10th, 2024. So just about a little less than two months left. Uh, any issues, you can email us at scholarship at educationaladvancement.org. Uh, once you log on to our website, and that's, again, educationaladvancement.org, and you find this page, you just click the apply now button and that will take you directly to the application where you can start filling out um, all the necessary information. So this is the first screen you'll see in the application. Uh, <clears throat> again, it's due April 10th and this is just the landing page. This is a checklist so that you can see um, if you've done your academic re recommendation, your additional recommendation, uh, transcripts, standardized test scores, student work sample, pairing guardian statement, quick takes, reflective prompts, 
optional documents. Um, and again, those are completely optional. Um, and the first thing that you're going to do is just fill out uh, basic information, demographic information. So name, first name, last name, current year in school, which again should be seventh grade. Um, there will also be applications for or information sections for parents' information, parents' names, uh, because they, we are, do ask parents to complete the application alongside um, their child. So the big first one that we always get is the academic referral. These are the screens that you're going to see for academic and for the additional referral. So for the academic referral, we ask for a current sixth or seventh grade STEM or humanities teacher. So a lot of questions are, what does a STEM teacher entail? A STEM teacher is anybody in the science area, so physics, uh, biology, chemistry, or just general science, technology. So if you took a coding class, or if you took programming um, or computer class, anything like that, that is also in STEM. Engineering, again, if you've taken an engineering course, this can count as long as they're your sixth or seventh grade teacher. Uh, and mathematics, so that's any course from algebra, algebra two, calculus, if you've taken it, any of those courses will be included in the STEM category, while the humanities category is a little bit more of the social sciences. So that'll be an English teacher, um, a social studies teacher, a history course. Um, those are more uh, what we mean by humanities teacher. So one of your recommenders needs to be an academic uh, recommender, which again, should be a STEM or humanities teacher. Um, and the other or the additional recommender should be anybody that does not know you in an academic context. Now, this can be a coach. This can be a music teacher. This can be uh, a music instructor. So if you have a private tutor for music, that is also uh, a good resource. This can be an administrator. If you do volunteer, volunteer groups with your church, it could be your church leader. Uh, anybody that doesn't know you inside of the classroom, that is who we are asking for in this additional recommendation. And then it's just, again, because we look at this application holistically, it just lets us know what kind of a person you are, both inside of class and outside of class. Um, and so for the academic referrals, what you'll do is you'll type in their first name here, their last name here, and then their email, and make sure that you have that email right. We've already seen a couple of applications um, where it wasn't really put in right, and so the recommendation never got to them. but. As soon as you type in all of that information and then you hit save the first time, it will automatically send it out to that teacher. Uh, I would also recommend that you talk to your teacher and you ask him, hey, I uh, asked for you to be a recommender. Is it OK? And can you please check your email? And sometimes it does go to spam. So I would recommend you uh, tell your teacher to check their spam folder if they haven't already uh, received or uploaded the recommendation. So. Once that happens, your recommender will be sent a link and that link attaches their recommendation to your application. So you don't need to worry about anything else. Now, if at a point in the application, we see that you still have not had your, recommend, your recommender upload their information, that's not gonna hurt you. We will reach out to you and say, hey, we noticed the application is due in two or three days and you still don't have your recommenders in, we would ask you to please uh, contact them, or you can switch your recommender as well. And if you switch your recommender, uh, just let them know, and that way um, they know who is uploading the application. Okay, so the app the components of the application. Again, this is the general application form. First and foremost, this is your name, your academic history. Um, so that's where you've been to school, whether that be public, private, day school, uh, boarding school, or um, homeschool. So that's what the general application form is. You will also have uh, the same application for your parents. And again, this is demographic. So this is mostly uh, name, last name, uh, what your parents do for a living and things like that. Um, then we also ask for the two most recent years of standardized test scores. So some examples of standardized scores are the STAR test, uh, the iReady test, Terra Nova, MAP. So any test where all of the school takes it, that is a uh, standardized test. If it's something administered by the state, that's a standardized test. And if it's something administered by um, anybody that isn't your classroom teacher is a standardized test. And we ask for the two most recent years of those standardized tests. So if you're in seventh grade, 
usually you'll have them in fifth grade and sixth grade, but if for whatever reason you don't have the fifth grade and sixth grade ones and all you have is the fourth grade and the fifth grade ones, we do ask for just the two most recent ones. If also now that we're in um, the second semester of the school year, if you have the first semesters, uh, seventh grades, we could also take those. Again, we just want two of the most recent standardized test scores um, that you have available to you. And if for whatever reason your school doesn't do standardized tests, because we know um, that a lot of schools are phasing that out, um, if for whatever reason you don't do a standardized test at your school, um, all you need to do is upload a Google Doc saying, my school does not do standardized testing. Um, and then that way we know that that's why you're not submitting the scores. Um, you can't submit the application without uploading a file there. So that's how we know um, whether your school does standardized testing or not. Uh, the next thing that we need are transcripts. So again, you must upload a transcript or a grade report for the 2022-2023 school year and the first semester of the 2023 to 2024 school year, so this school year. Um, so again, we ask for the sixth grade the entire year and then the first semester of seventh grade. Now, uh, if your student or your school does uh, quarters instead of semesters, just again, uh, the most recent uh, grade transcripts from sixth grade and from seventh grade. Um, and again, homeschool transcripts, I know those are a little trickier and we know that uh, those don't always look traditional, but that's okay. You just sometimes send the syllabus for the courses that you take along with a reading list, along with the work that you've done and the grades that you've received. So again, these are grade reports. And if your school doesn't do grades, we've seen it all, just uh, upload uh, a document explaining what your grades look like and we can uh, take a look at those. And again, this is just a data point for us to, to know the application, the applicant, sorry, a little more. The next section will be quick takes, and this is really fun. This is where a lot of the kids get to um, really explore who they are and really tell us more about themselves outside of, you know, their grades and outside of their academic interests. So quick takes are very short answers like, what is your favorite color? What is your favorite room to be in? What's your favorite place in the world? Who is a role model you look up to? And again, just one to two sentences max, uh, just very quickly uh, so that our kids can get to uh, really explain who they are and like a very quick overview. So again, the, that's our quick take section. Uh, and then finally is our reflective prompt. So everybody has to respond to the mandatory essay prompt. And yes, that one has to be an essay. And then you can click two of the additional prompts. So there's a total of five prompts available. You have to pick two of those additional prompts so that you can uh, upload to your application. Uh, one must be an essay. So again, you can respond to one in an essay and the other one can be a creative piece. So a creative piece can be a poem, it can be a video, it can be maybe a piece of music that you've written for it. So as long as it answers the prompt, it can be anything you want. You Maybe you want to do an art piece and then explain the art piece and how it relates to the prompt. That is also something that you can do. Um, and one more thing that we do say is that you must stay within the word limits. So we won't read more than whatever the word limit is for those prompts. So if the word limit is 500, we will only read the first 500 words and then nothing after that. Uh, so keep that in mind while you're doing these reflective prompts and make sure um, to answer the questions and answer them creatively. Okay. The next part, again, this is a portfolio application. So the next part is a student work sample. And this is again, uh, where students submit a piece of work that demonstrates a student's ability, aptitude, creative, creativity, and motivation. Um, again, this can be anything that you've done in class. Let's say you uh, are very much uh, aligned for science and you love science, science is your passion, you can submit a lab report. Um, that's not more than a chapter of a book. Uh, you can submit, for example, a proof that you might have done in a math class. You can submit uh, an essay that you really enjoyed writing for a history class, a documentary film that you might have made. But if you do submit a video, it can be no longer than three minutes. And if it is longer than three minutes, we will only watch the first three minutes. Um, this is again in the name of equity so that we know that uh, you aren't submitting more than another student and vice versa so that everybody has the same chance. We're only going to watch three minutes of any video you do submit. Uh, and then finally, if you are, if you've written a book or are interested in writing a book, 
we ask that you don't submit more than eight chapters. So we will only read that first chapter if you do submit the entire book. So again, the student work sample, this is so that we can see what kind of work uh, a student produces and it can be from class, it can be outside of class, um, whatever you choose that you think best uh, fits who you are. And then the next part is the parent and guardian statement. This again is written by the parent and is written uh, in reflection or reflecting on who the student is. And so we do have some guidelines and some guided questions for that. You do not need to answer every single question on that parent guardian statement. That is just a guide for you to know uh, what kind of things you should be putting in the parent guardian statement. So, sorry, parent and guardian statement. Um, and that will only be 500 words, just like the other uh, essay prompts. We will not read more than the first 500 words. Uh, and again, I already talked about the academic recommendation a little, but it is to be returned by a humanities or a STEM teacher from the past two years. So whether that be your seventh grade teacher, your current seventh grade teacher, or your former sixth grade teacher in a humanities or a STEM class. And then an additional recommendation is to be completed by uh, somebody outside of that those academic areas. So again, an elective teacher, if you want your Spanish teacher to really answer or be your recommender, this is where they would be. If you want an administrator or a community leader, um, those are the people that you would uh, reach out to as an additional recommender. Um, and then lastly, these are completely optional. And when we say optional, we do mean optional. It does not hurt and it does not help an applicant uh, to submit the following, the SAT, the ACT, or the upper level SAT scores. Again, you have to put upper level. So if you do, uh, if you are in seventh grade, you have to put that you're in eighth grade, but we understand the people that administer the SSAT know that it's okay to just put eighth grade and we will receive those scores um, as long as you send it along uh, with the official uh, test report. So, okay. The additional or optional information. So again, this is where you're going to upload anything you feel might add to your application that you already haven't answered, whether that be in the reflective prompts and the quick takes uh, or in the general application. So again, you might write an essay here that includes like opportunities that you feel are unique to your circumstance or challenges that are unique to your circumstance. Um, you can also here upload, for example, if you're very passionate about ballet, but um, you need to have an additional piece of information that says that, you can upload here a video explaining that and then a video of you performing a ballet or uh, playing the piano or writing a proof or any of those things. Again, uh, this is why we say the two additional pieces of documentation, that can be the video, that can be um, anything that backs your story. And again, limit your answers to 500 words. We will not read past 500. I see a couple of Q and A's, so I'm just gonna very quickly, is there a timing limit for the creative? Yes, so the timing limit, uh, if it's a video response, again, three minutes is the max. So we will not see uh, more than three minutes. Oh, and then I see another question. Yes, this webinar will be available on YouTube uh, for you to see after we're done here. So it should be available tomorrow. Uh, timing limit. So yeah, good question so far. And then I'll go ahead and answer. The work's almost something done inside or outside. Okay, I will answer the rest of these questions. I'm sorry, at the end of the webinar, just to respect our time. So, okay, frequently asked questions. What is a standardized test score? So again, a standardized a standardized test is a test that everybody at the school takes. Uh, so if that is administered by administration, if that's administered um, by grade level, that is a standardized test and you can submit those test scores. Um, you'll know if it's a standardized test, mostly, again, if the whole school is taking it, like if they carve out a day to take it, or a lot of the times if you get those scores in the mail, those are standardized tests. What if my school doesn't administer standardized tests? That's completely um, understandable. And again, we've seen a lot of applications where the school doesn't administer a standardized test because they're faking them out. Um, you just have to upload a Google Doc or upload a Word Doc that says, uh, my school does not administer standardized tests, therefore I don't have any scores and that's completely okay. We will read that and we will know um, to keep reading your application. We're not gonna throw away your application just because you don't have a standardized test score. Um, we are here to, to help and we're here uh, to really see the child for, for all that they are, the whole gifted child. 
uh, do I have to submit SSAT, ACT, or ACT standardized test scores? So you do not have to submit SSAT, ACT, or SAT scores. Those are optional, and we do mean that they are completely optional. It does not help, and it does not hurt a student to uh, upload their SSAT or ACT scores. Um, but again, that's just one more piece of information uh, for us to see what the student is and what the student has done um, in their academic careers. Okay, will it look better if I took the SSAT? No. Again, it does not help and it does not hurt. That is one more piece of information. So if you feel like your SSAT score represents uh, your hard work as a student, please uh, give those scores to us. But if you took the ACT, you took the SAT, and you didn't really like your scores, you do not need to submit it. We are a test optional op application. Uh, how do I submit a meta file for my application? That is a very frequently asked question that I haven't answered yet. So you submit a media file by uploading a Google Doc uh, with a link to that media file. So for example, if you play the cello and there's a recital that you really want us to see, you would upload that cello recital either to Dropbox or to Google Drive. And then once that's uploaded, you're going to write a Google Doc with the link to the file. Make sure it's shareable. Uh, make sure you edit the sharing setting so that anybody with the file can view that. Um, once we click that link, it will take us to your um, file and it, we can see the cello recital or we can see the ballet recital, the piano performance. We can see you playing soccer, playing hockey, any of those um, media files that you might want to upload. Again, upload a Google Doc with the uh, link uh, attached so that we can just click the link and then that way um, we know to attach it to your application. Don't try to submit uh, the media file directly on the application um, because we do uh, see that that can mess up the application and can really um, just take forever to upload on your end and on our end. Uh, how long can a media file be? Again, uh, we encourage you to for it to be shorter than three minutes and we will only watch three minutes. So if you've worked on a film and this film is two hours long, um, we will not watch more than three minutes of that film. So if you want us to watch a specific three minutes, you can note that in your file. But again, we will not watch more than three minutes of a piece. Uh, does my work sample have to be from school? No, your work sample can be from outside of class. It can be from inside of class. It can be from uh, a research project that you're doing maybe with a professor at your local university. Uh, it can be a work sample that of a community group that you've done that maybe you did um, marketing for them. Uh, it does not have to be from school. It can be from in school or out of school. Can my transcript be unofficial? Yes, your transcript can be unofficial. Uh, we just ask that you upload those. Uh, a lot of the times we'll get schools uh, that send us those applications or those transcripts. Um, we will not attach those to your application. Those have to come from you. So please don't ask your school to send us transcripts. Please just upload those files on you. So for example, if you receive yours as only a hard copy, go ahead and scan those and then upload those to your application, um, whether that be the semester ones or whether that be the whole year ones, as long as it's the most recent two years of school. So again, your entire sixth grade year and the first semester or the first half of your seventh grade year. Um, but we do ask that those transcripts be unofficial. Uh, what can I submit for additional information? Again, this is where you can submit another media piece. You can submit um, a piece that talks about your circumstances, talks about any challenges that you might have faced. Um, those are the things that you can submit for additional information. Uh, what if I have more awards? Please do not put more than one award per space. Um, pick the most important ones that you that you have. So for example, if we only allow 10 awards, but you've won 30, please pick the 10 most recent ones or the 10 that mean the most to you. So maybe you won a perfect attendance award, but at the same time, you won first place in the cello recital that we were talking about. I would say to upload the cello recital one, just because that shows a little more of your passions rather than you know a perfect attendance award. So again, you do not have to include every single award that you've ever won. We just ask for the most important ones, and um, that is up to your discretion to decide. Okay, so we were talking about uh, some testing dates, and these are, uh, again, the optional ACT, SAT, or SSAT. So these are the dates. The ACT is coming up in April. 
Uh, the SAT is coming up in March, and then the upper level SSAT is coming up in May. Uh, and to send us those scores for the SAT, you're, you're just going to put in the code 3862. For the ACT, you're going to put in the code 7818. And for the SSAT, you're going to send scores to Institute for Educational Advancement. You don't have to include the the. Um, it doesn't actually send it. It won't show up if you include the the. So please just send them to Institute for Educational Advancement. And again, we know that the ACT and the SSAT are after the application date has closed. That's completely fine. We will receive it. Um, just make sure to make a note that you've taken it. And then that way we know um, to expect those scores um, and we will keep reading your application. Again, these are optional, so it does not help and it does not hurt you if you don't take the SAT, the ACT, or the SSAT. And again, it must be the upper level SSAT, not the middle level. Okay, so how to prepare for the Caroline D. Bradley Scholarship. These are some uh, tips and tricks and just general advice that we've seen uh, be helpful to students. So allow plenty of time to complete your application. Again, today is February 22nd and the application is due in April. So that's less than two months. Uh, so most of you that are on this webinar uh, have started the application already. And if you haven't, we would suggest that you do um, start soon because you do have to ask for your recommenders. And we typically tell students to ask uh, the recommenders at least three to four weeks in advance so that they know um, what to expect and that they know uh, they have plenty of time to complete the application. Uh, stay within the maximum word counts. Again, uh, do not write an essay that is seven pages long when we've only asked for one. That shows that you haven't uh, read the instructions or you don't follow the instructions uh, and we won't read any more than the maximum word counts. Again, um, this is our selection committee that's talking. This is us that's talking. We have a lot of experience in reading applications, and uh, it's much better to just have a memorable essay than have a huge essay that uh, we're not going to get to. So another thing is don't include extra items if specifically given number limits in certain categories, such as recommendations. So we ask for two recommendations, again, because that's the holistic uh, approach that we take to our application. So the the two would be the academic and the additional. Do not try to go with one more academic. Do not try to go with one more additional. We will only read the two recommendations. Um, again, this is just so that everybody's on an equal playing field and so that everybody only gets two recommendations. Uh, start your prep early. Again, be mindful of the deadline and it's April 10th, 2024. Um, request letters of recommendation months ahead of time. This is what I said. Um, if you haven't started your application yet, you're just in time. Go tell your recommenders right now to watch out for an email uh, from us. And again, uh, you the more time you give yourself, we do not uh, start reading applications until after that April 10th deadline. So if you feel like you're done with your application now, sit from it, sit with it a little bit, read over it again, make sure there's no mistakes, have somebody else read through your essays just so that they can catch mistakes and so that you can get more eyes on it. So your recommender should know you well enough to write a positive letter recommendation. Again, um, it has to be a humanities or a STEM teacher from the last two years. And if you're homeschooled, uh, it has to be one of the tutors in those areas. Again, if you took uh, a homeschool course that was in uh, Shakespeare, that would be under the humanities category. Or if you took one that was coding and programming based, that would be in the STEM category. Um, and your additional recommender should be an elective teacher. So if you have a close relationship with your Spanish teacher um, and that's the person that you want to be your additional recommender, please include them and please make sure that uh, you reach out to them. They can be a school counselor. Maybe you're super close with them. A coach, again, if you play a sport and your coach is the person that you really lean on, um, that is a really good additional recommender as well. Uh, it can be a community leader or an extracurricular activity instructor. It's just somebody that knows you outside of class. So again, make sure that your academic recommender knows you very well and can speak um, on you as a student and your additional recommender can speak to you as outside of the classroom. Thanks for remember, 
uh, the student is the applicant. So again, the application is the student's responsibility to complete. A parent can assist and a parent, we do encourage parents to sit down with their students uh, and work on the application together. But at the end of the day, it should be the seventh grade student writing the application and the seventh grade student completing the application. This again, shows us the commitment and it shows us just uh, the passion and how much effort uh, a student is putting into this. And so that's why we ask that the student is applying, not the parent. Um, proof your work. Again, it's okay to have your parent review the work. It's okay to have a teacher review the work. Make sure the more eyes on it, the better, just because this way you can see uh, grammar errors, spelling errors. Um, you've been looking at this essay probably more times than you can count. And so it's always better to get a second opinion, uh, just as long as, again, your work stays your work. Be original. Again, it's always better to stand out and to have uh, a, an attention getter or make sure that your essay is really focused on your passions and who you are as a person rather than just what you think the committee wants to hear, right? So your voice should come through in that essay and your voice should really um, be specific about your experiences, your memories. It should be about the moments in your life that we're asking about. Um, and we really do love to read applications where students are sharing their passions and where students really do come through and where students um, are lively in that. So that's why we do ask uh, to be original. And those are some things that uh, are just really good application tips in general. Okay, so let me go ahead and answer the Q&A questions. Uh, yes, the additional recommendation can be a coach from outside of school that's completely fine. So if you play like uh, City League basketball or City League soccer, any of those sports, um, it has to be a coach from outside of school. Our school requires that school registrar sends an official transcript copy to recommend the institution. Yes, you can upload unofficial transcripts to the application portal and have them send the official ones to a specific email. Uh, again, we prefer unofficial transcripts. Um, so if your school... Uh, we'll say that they only they can send transcripts. Just um, get us the unofficial one, and that will be completely fine. If the standardized is paper form, do I submit a scan of the standardized test? Uh, just the results. So if it's a standardized paper form test, uh, but you get the results also as paper, just submit the results. We don't need the whole, um, the whole scan. Uh, can we receive a link for the YouTube recording? It will be on our website, so it'll be on educationaladvancement.org. Um, so we will upload that YouTube link. Uh, Chadwick High Schools. Okay, if you have a very specific question, um, can you please email us? Again, that's our email. It is scholarship at educationaladvancement.org. Uh, what can the scholarship be used? Can I use it for summer program online schools? That's a great question. So if you do end up being selected for this high school, for the scholarship, um, we are a tuition scholarship. So what that means is we pay tuition, whether that be to a private school, whether that be to a public school, um, whether that be to uh, a boarding school, we only pay tuition. So if, for example, a lot of our kids are at Phillips Exeter, um, we will not pay the boarding fees, but we will pay the tuition. Um, if, for example, there's a question on here about a summer program or online school, uh, if that is going to uh, enrich your education, yes, we will pay. Uh, we have paid for a lot of uh, our applicants or our, our scholars to uh, have those opportunities, again, as long as they're educational and they're tuition related. Uh, do you accept HSPT? High school placement test. Yes, that is a standardized test, so we will take it. If I already took the SAT, can I upload the score report from College Board? Uh, if you still have access to uh, College Board to send it to us officially, please have them send it to us officially. Um, it'll get to our email. Um, but if not, it's OK to upload it on your own. But uh, we do prefer the SAT and the ACTs to be the official uh, forms. Yes, there is a maximum number limit of recommendation letters, and that is two, one academic and one additional. Uh, can an elective teacher from school be one of the recommenders? Yes, they can be your additional recommender, right? So they're elective teachers. Uh, if that's your choir teacher, orchestra, art, um, anything that isn't in the humanities or the STEM field. 
Yes, you can submit a YouTube link instead of a Google Drive link. Uh, we just prefer Google Drive just because it's a little safer. But if it's on YouTube and you can, you know, if that's you on YouTube, you can submit a YouTube link. Uh, when will applicants find out if they have been selected for an interview? Okay, that's a good question. So we do have a second phase of the application. So uh, our classes are usually 30 scholars, and that means that we interview right around 60 uh, students per year. And those interviews, we try to reach out and we try to make them um, across the country. Uh, if you're local to SoCal, you will we will ask you to come into the office. Uh, but then outside of that, we will coordinate with each uh, scholar to to see where the best interview place would be. Um, and those usually take place over the summer uh, after we've read the applications and decided on uh, the finalists. The application has a section to add academic courses outside of school. Yes, if your child only has taken courses inside of school, you can leave that uh, the courses taken outside of school section blank. Yes. How many people apply each year? Uh, I think it varies. So for the most part, we've had two to 300 people. Well, I would say closer to three, 300 people uh, apply each year to the scholarship. Um, yes. Okay. That's a really good question. The question is, can students who are awarded the scholarship remain at their current school and use the scholarship award for classes outside of their school? Yes. So if you are at a public school right now and you uh, are going to be going to a high school that you're really excited about, that's okay. You can stay at that public high school. We will encourage that, especially we work with families to decide on the best education for their, for their scholars. And uh, obviously that means that we have an opinion. Uh, the student has an opinion that is very valuable and the family has, a, has an opinion. And so if you think that you really like your school and you want to stay there, you can use the scholarship to stay at that current school uh, for your four years. It does not have to be a boarding school. It does not have to be an independent school um, or any of the things. Uh, can you say clearly about the definition of tuition? Can I use scholarship to pay the tuition for summer program, academic summer camp, music camp, et cetera? Yes. So yes, tuition just means um, what it traditionally means. Again, I know that's a little vague, but I don't want to be vague. So Yes, we can pay for summer programs or academics, summer camps, especially music camps, if that's something that um, interests your uh, your child to, to further their passions. As long as it is academic related, we can pay that tuition. So, for example, um, a really good example is like an EF tour, right, which is Education First Tours. That is not necessarily something that we would pay just because that is more so of a trip. But if you take a course um, over the summer with CTY, the Center for Talented Youth. Um, and so again, if you work with the Center for Talented Youth and take a course with them, we will cover that course because that's a course and that is um, an enrichment thing. So again, that is a little bit more of the distinction between like tuition versus um, non-tuition, right? So again, academic summer camps, music summer camps, yes, those are all things that could be related to tuition. Um, so um again to to continue on the cty or the duke tip example um if you take a course with cty we will pay for the course but we will not pay for the boarding at that at that course if that makes sense right so again that's the distinction between tuition and boarding um and then final questions yes there is a maximum number limit for recommendation letters it is two right so again um, if there's a limit of recommendations, you will only get one academic recommendation and one extra. So two is the max. We will not read more than two recommendation letters. Um, my son is working on the application. He has listed uh, information for two recommendations. Will your email? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. As long as you hit save, that automatically sends the recommendation to uh, the teacher. So again, uh, if you're working on the application, but you haven't quite submitted, that's okay. We will send out those uh, recommendations still to uh, your two recommenders as long as you hit save and as long as their information is correct. If you touch base with your recommenders and they say, oh, I still haven't gotten anything from the scholarship, please email us. Don't input their information again. Please email us um, scholarship at educationaladvancement.org and we will answer your question and we'll get that um, recommendation link out to your recommenders if they haven't automatically received it. So again, 
Um, we figured out the system to where it does uh, automatically send it, but if for whatever reason it doesn't, no need to panic, email us and we can get that over to your recommenders. Is economic hardship a factor to explain? Does this help applicants? Uh, so we are a need blind application. So that means that um, it is merit based, but if you feel that economic hardship has played a significant role um, in your education or anything like that, I would say to go ahead and list that under the additional information sections, because we do allow uh, an essay or an explanation of up to 500 words. Um, and if that helps contextualize your situation a little more, we do recommend that you upload that uh, as additional information. Um, and again, it's not helping or hurting it. It's more contextualizing, right? Um, but yes, these are all very good questions. And we're right at about 512, so a little early, but uh, I'll stay on for a little bit. But if you have any other questions, please uh, type them into the Q&A. Um, you can also, again, email us uh, at scholarship at educationalinvestment.org, uh, and we can handle all those. Yes, you can... Yes, you can start an application and then save it later. So every time that you uh, exit and enter the application, make sure you hit save. Um, okay, sorry, I got distracted for a little bit. But yes, as long as you come in and out of that application uh, and you hit save every time and make sure it'll ask you for uh, the email, uh, just make sure that you're using the same email every time and make sure that uh, you're typing in that email right. If you are having trouble with that, uh, a lot of the times it's just that people misspell their email um, or copy their email wrong. That's okay. Just email us. Don't start a new application. Email us saying, hey, I can't access the application and I've already started it. We can look for it um, and make sure that you're uh, going through and doing the right steps. Uh, so yes, you can save it multiple times and come back later to upload the essays. Um, I think that's actually a really smart idea is to work on your essays um, on like Google Docs or on one of the live uh, Google documents so that that way you can always track your progress um, and then you can always save it. Okay. Um, if recommenders checking spam, what should they be looking for? They should be looking for an email from recommendations at educationaladvancement.org. Um, and it should be a link with a long email that says, dear uh, recommender, so-and-so asked for a recommendation for the Caroline D. Bradley Scholarship. Uh, and again, that is going to be coming from recommendations at educationaladvancement.org. Is there a separate application for UNASA? Yes, UNASA applications are live and open. Um, and those are actually found on our website and they are different um, programs. So they do have different applications. Um, we also have some webinars on that. So I would recommend that you check out our website, educationaladvancement.org. You will find all of the UNASA things there. Uh, yes. So can I have a recommendation letter from a math teacher and one from a Spanish teacher? Yes. Perfect. So the math teacher falls under the STEM category and then the Spanish teacher would fall under the additional category, right? So yes, you can have those two. Uh, when are we notified if our child gets an interview or not? Okay. So we don't have a concrete timeline for this just because every year it varies, but the application is due April 10th. And so at some point during the summer, um, usually in June and July is when you will know if your child uh, gets an interview or not. If your child has been selected as a finalist, that is when they get the interview. And again, we select 50 to 60 finalists every year. But thank you guys. Love these questions. These are really good questions. Okay. So it is 5.15 Pacific time. Thank you all again for showing up. Thank you all for your questions and for engaging. Um, we really appreciate everybody working on their applications. Uh, we wanna wish good luck to those, those of y'all that, that are applying. Um, and again, if you have any questions, uh, you can email us at scholarship at educationalinvestment.org. Um, but yeah, sorry, one last thing. For award, do I need to submit a copy? No, you just, upload the, you just upload the NH text box and you do not need to submit a copy of the award. You just need to uh, list it. But again, yes. Uh, we usually take anywhere from 25 to 30 scholars per year. So it is a competitive application.
All right. So again, thank you all for coming. Thank you all for, for being here. Uh, I hope you have a good rest of your evening and good luck on all of your uh, endeavors. Thank you so much, guys.